Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're looking at a compact oxygen production room that you can use to create air in your colony to keep your duplicates alive and oxygen not included. At the start of the game, of course, you have some oxalite crystals that produce air and keep your duplicates alive initially, but it doesn't take very long before those oxalite crystals run out and you have to start produce your own air. Initially, you have two basic choices for air. You can use the algae deoxidizer, or of course, you can also use the algae terrarium, uh, which I tend to prefer not to use myself, only because it consumes both water and duplicate time in order for them to continue to fuel it. The algae deoxidizer takes algae and then breaks it down and produces air. The oxygen that comes out of the machine, though, unfortunately, it tends to be pretty warm. So over time, you're not only are you going to consume the algae that you have available for you, but you're also producing air that's pretty warm. It comes out at around 30 degrees Celsius, and that will warm up your colony, and that can definitely provide a certain cause certain problems, specifically for plants, where body temperature is really important. They only thrive in a body temperature between 10 degrees and 30 degrees. So as your machines are running, things are getting warmer in your colony, you're producing warm air, the overall temperature in the colony is going to rise. That can cause additional problems for your food supply for your duplicates, and you don't really want that to happen. As you advance to the game, you can get access to the electrolyzer through research. Now, once you have these researched, you can pump water into the electrolyzer, and it produces a mix of both hydrogen and oxygen. The electrolyzer consumes 1,000 grams per second of water, 120 watts of power, and it will produce 888 grams per second of oxygen and 112 grams per second of hydrogen, basically just splitting it into the two basic elements. In the past, I've used an oxygen production room that, that creates a bell chamber and takes up a fair amount of space and quite a bit of time to produce. It also consumes a lot of power because I'm using multiple pumps, multiple electrolyzers, I'm often using a filter to try to filter the gases, and that was my go-to for the longest time. If you've seen my other tutorial on the subject of electrolyzers, you might have seen that set up there. More recently, though, I've been using a more compact system to produce oxygen that takes less space, less time to build, and also consumes a lot less power. So much so that I can actually separate this oxygen production completely from my power grid and make it run at its own power using just batteries and the hydrogen generator. Now, there are many ways to build an oxygen included. This is by no means the best solution or the only solution. This just happens to be the one that I've been using most recently. Now we're gonna build this oxygen room in debug mode currently in order for speed and efficiency. However, you can build this in real time in a colony that you might be playing in the game. As if you've been watching my streams at all, you would have seen me building these, and it's certainly a very efficient little oxygen production system. So first of all, we're going to need a little a little U-shaped section at the bottom that contains four, uh, space for four tiles on the inside. Above this one, we're going to do a little, a little insert, just a small little instep. Now this is where we're going to have our pump initially for our oxygen. For all practical purposes, when you're building, you might actually want to, to use um, some doors and things in order to access this room so that your duplicates can get in and out while they're working. Though these are not certainly, certainly not something that you're going to need to keep later on. Above the section here where we're going to have the oxygen, you need to either use airflow tile or mesh tile. Uh, I've been using mesh tile lately, uh, but we'll place that in here. And this is where our electrolyzer is going to sit in order to produce the oxygen. The electrolyzer goes right above here. Again, we can use doors to kind of fill in the spacing in here. And this gives you access to, for your duplicates to go in and out of the room in case you make an error and you need to fix something. Above our oxygen pump, we need a second pump. This pump's purpose is going to be to move the hydrogen in order to send it off to the hydrogen generator. The entire unit needs to be enclosed in order to contain the gases. But above this door, you want to leave a one tile gap high and close off the entirety of the room. This is the basic shape of the room you're going to work with. Oxygen that's produced by the electrolyzer will go downwards into the lower area where the gas pump is, and the hydrogen should move upwards into the upper section. In order to get the whole system running, of course, you'll need an input of water. I did build a pump ahead of time over here, so we're just going to send some piping for the water up to this space. And then you're also going to need electricity. Now, it, this particular setup requires an input of electricity initially to get working, but then doesn't require any in the long term in order to run the oxygen room. So we're going to need, uh, generally I'll use a manual generator in order to set this up. We'll connect our wiring into the various pumps and also into the electrolyzer. Later we can ultimately separate this. We're also going to need electricity down to the pump naturally in order to send the power there. So we can move the water. We're not going to connect that just yet because I don't want the water moving in here just yet. Outside of our oxygen production room, we're going to need to place a hydrogen generator as well as some batteries in order to produce the power and then store the excess power that we're going to make. This particular generator outputs 800 watts of power, so if we look at the consumption in here, we only have we only have 600 watts of power consumption in here, so we know that when the generator is running, we're going to produce a little bit of excess. 
To store that excess, I'm using two large batteries. That will give us room to put the overflow power, and that will ensure that when this hydrogen generator isn't running, we'll continue to store the power that we can feed back into the system once we've removed the manual generator, because we're not going to need to continue to input power here. The gases that are coming out of this system, the lower pump is going to need to move oxygen out to the colony, and the upper pump is going to need to move, move hydrogen into our hydrogen generator. Now, when your pump first starts running, the gas it's going to be sending isn't just going to be hydrogen to your hydrogen generator. Any other gases you send are going to cause it some damage. So you do have the option of, of filtering out the gas a little bit. For example, you could create a vent that sends your uh, all of the gases out into the space around it until you have a clean flow of hydrogen that you want to send to your generator. You could, you could install a filter that you can use for a period of time uh, that does consume additional power but can filter out the gases as well. I'm personally kind of lazy, so I tend to just send all the gases to the hydrogen generator, let it take a little bit of damage, and use a little bit of extra metal to repair it by having a duplicate go over there. But that's not necessarily the most efficient method. That just tends to be the way that I approach it. Inside of our oxygen production chamber, we don't want the hydrogen pump to run constantly. We only want this pump to run when there's a certain, uh, a certain percentage of gas at the top portion to, to move hydrogen into our pump. If you let it clear out all the gas that's in here, you'll get a poor separation of gas between your oxygen and hydrogen. You'll forever be getting oxygen in your mix. If you can maintain a high concentration of hydrogen at the top of your, of your room, though, this pump will only be moving hydrogen. You don't have to worry about having a, a separate filter all the time that's going to consume power. So we'll place an Atmos sensor in here and we'll connect this up to our, our top pump using the automation wire. Our Atmos sensor, we're going to set it so that it only turns on if the gas pressure is above 750 grams. Of course, our, our lower gas pump that's moving the oxygen is going to require a vent. I use a normal gas vent for this purpose because it makes the, makes the room self-regulating. This vent won't allow gas to be pumped out at higher than 2,000 grams in the, in the surrounding area or 2 kilograms. And that ensures that you're not over over oxygenating your room and you're going to have a debug where your duplicate's ears are popping. So you'll this will keep its own self-regulating system. What will happen is this pump will just stop moving the gases. The pressure will build up inside this space until we hit max pressure. The electrolyzer stops running. And then in the context of that usage, you don't really have to worry about any excess, uh, any excess pressure going out into your colony. This system's now ready to run. I've connected the liquid pump to our power supply, so we have a flow of water coming in. You can see the bottom oxygen pump is just clearing out all the gases that's in the lower area. It's creating a bit of a vacuum. And as the water moves into our electrolyzer, it'll start to produce oxygen and hydrogen. Now, the, the interesting thing about the way the gases work in, in Oxygen Unincluded is that you can't have two different gases occupying the same space in the game. Hydrogen likes to sort itself upwards in the, in the mix. Oxygen likes to filter itself below hydrogen because hydrogen tends to rise in your colony. So if we can clear out all the other gases that's in this space up here, then we could allow for a concentration of hydrogen in the top portion that contains no oxygen. We've just hit that threshold now. I can turn off the, this, uh, this pump here by setting it to the appropriate setting for 750 grams above. And now from this point forward, there's no power required to sort the gases. Hydrogen comes out of the top of the machine. It takes up the top layer in our room. And the oxygen, regardless of the amount of pressure that might be contained in it, so here we have 1,300 grams of pressure for oxygen, and up here we only have 627 grams of hydrogen, but they'll never trade places because the oxygen can't move up past it. Because of that, we're able to keep this as a pure hydrogen mix and the lower portion as pure oxygen, and as long as we continue to move the gases out, this will produce a steady outgoing flow of 500 grams per second of oxygen. This pump at the top will only turn on periodically when we get sufficient pressure built up in hydrogen. That sends the hydrogen out to our generator, which will run and produce 800 watts per second of power. The excess power it will go into store up in our batteries, and we can actually, at this point, just disconnect, disconnect the incoming power supply from our manual generator, and this will be its own self-maintaining system. Now, of course, we did take some damage on our uh, hydrogen generator while I was uh, separating the gases. But a quick repair, it's all ready to go, and this is now a self-perpetuating system. This generator will produce enough power to run the room at all times. Any excess power it produces will get stored in the top, so when the generator isn't running, all the machines will continue to operate. Even though we have 600 watts of power consumption in total when everything's running, this top pump doesn't run all the time, it only runs periodically. So for all intents and purposes, we're most often going to be pulling 360 watts of power through our system while we're producing 800 on an intermittent system. Because of this, we can completely disconnect this from our power grid. 
so we don't have to worry about overloading any other systems. And it will be self-maintaining from a power perspective. You do have to have a flow of water to keep going into it, and managing your water is a totally different topic. But this is the way I like to produce oxygen in my colony. My current colony has two of these small oxygen rooms operating, and as you can see from our oxygen overlay, we have a very good concentration of oxygen in here. Uh, I have once in, a, once in a while used my algae deoxidizer because we have a total of 15 duplicates. And at one point, the pressure in this area got a little bit on the low side because of an interrupted water flow. But now that we have the oxygen rooms flowing again, oxygen supply within our colony has been really solid, and we haven't had any issues with having to try to maintain it. This small, efficient system takes up dramatically less space than the original one I used to use, but does an excellent job of keeping the colony well supplied with oxygen. The one challenge that you'll find with these little oxygen production rooms, though, is that they do produce a fair amount of heat. The gas that's coming out of this room is at 40 degrees Celsius, and you don't want to pump that into your colony because it's, it's too hot. It'll overheat your farms, and they'll start producing food and cause other issues in your colony. In this instance, I have the oxygen room built at the top area of my colony, and I want to cool the oxygen that's coming out of it. In order to accomplish that, I created a system of pipes using radiant piping that snakes through this small little chamber that I filled up with wheeze warts in order to provide some cooling. This is really only an option that's available to you if you already have discovered a, a cold biome and you can retrieve the wheeze warts from it. But the oxygen that's coming through the, the system is that um, at this point it ranges between 36 and 40 degrees Celsius as it comes out of the system. It's actually cooling fairly quickly as it moves through here. It enters the radiant gas piping. Uh, and at the top here you can see the, the gas that's contained within the pipe is at 38.1 degrees Celsius. By the time it runs snakes through this area and gets cooled by the wheeze warts, it comes out at the other end at a nice comfortable temperature of 26.1 degrees, which is right within that uh, the, right within that ideal temperature range for plants and for the duplicates to be comfortable. The other alternative, if you've already uncovered a cold biome, is just to build your oxygen production room in the cold biome. This will allow for the oxygen that's being produced and sent out to come out at very cold temperatures. So in this case, the oxygen that's contained within this gas pipe is at 27, 28 degrees. By the time it moves through the cold biome to get out of here, it's in the 15 to 16 degree range. And then it's just a matter of just warming it up slightly so that by the time you pump that oxygen into your colony, it's sitting at a nice balmy 20 degree range. In this instance, instead of trying to cool the gases more as they come out of your system, you're actually trying to allow them to warm up a little bit so they work in the comfortable range. Um, this cold biome is starting to heat up, so things are getting a little bit warmer in here. Initially, the, the oxygen that was coming out of here was in the you know, one degree to below zero kind of temperature. Um, and now it's a little bit on the warmer side, but it's still allowing for the opportunity as it passes through here to cool a little bit further. And because of the insulated pipe we're using, by the time it arrives in our colony, it's sitting at an ideal temperature. If you don't have access to a cold biome just yet, you can also go into your utilities tab. If you've done enough research, you can use your thermal regulator. The thermal regulator is relatively straightforward to use. You simply build the regulator, feed the gas that you want uh, to cool into the top of the regulator with an output pipe at the bottom of the regulator, supply it with power, and as any oxygen that goes in will come out of the other side 14 degrees cooler than what it entered the system at. Um, you can then loop this if necessary or use multiple regulators in order to get to the temperature range that you need. The challenge with this is that the thermal regular tends to run very hot, um, so you do want to try to have some sort of cooling or isolate this system so it's completely separated from your colony and that way you're not worried about the, the heat that's produced. If the regulator runs constantly, it will get hot enough that it will damage itself. A simple way to solve for that is to just place a liquid vent above your above your regulator and allow some liquid to drip onto it and run off into some other reservoir. This won't keep it perfectly cold, but it will keep it cool enough that it won't damage itself and it'll help mitigate the amount of heat that you're producing. I hope you found this tutorial useful and you can use this kind of design in your own colony to help produce better oxygen flow and keep your duplicates alive. This is, of course, not the only way to produce oxygen. There are many different variations of using an electrolyzer to produce oxygen for your colony, but this is the one that I like to use myself, and hopefully you'll get some use of it as well. I'm, as always, Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.